Thank you. So let's get started. Um, why bark? It's always there. It's there 12 months a year. I think plants are living art. They're just astoundingly beautiful. And by the way, we're a plant, fellow plant enthusiast. I used to call myself a plant geek. I looked in the dictionary, one of the major definitions, a circus performer who bites the head off chickens. <laughs> so I, I skipped that term. Uh, and so it is also stunningly beautiful, amazingly variable. Even the, the, the two plants of the same species uh, can have the variable bark. And what is it? It's the outermost covering of the bark. Uh, there are many types of barks out there. By the way, this talk is part of a larger, it's 40% of an hour long talk, so this is really condensed version. I took uh, that kind of the best out of the best in my interpretation. You know, some people like vanilla, some like chocolate, so we all have different likes. Uh, by the way, this is going to be relatively informal. If you've got any questions at any time, feel free to ask. Uh, they bark with age, with, with species, so let's get started. This is in no particular order. Everyone's got a list. The videographer, what's your name? Gary. Gary, good luck with this. I'm, I, I tend to be, <laughs> you, you might get carpal tunnel trying to keep track. You know, I like to stroke the bark a little bit. <laughs> I was at Bernheim hugging trees until I grasped poison ivy, so I stopped that, so. <laughs> uh, except the last one I saved for a special. So Fagus grandifolia, American beaches, anything more beautiful, very sensuous, smooth bark. Uh, in the fall, they have this yellow fall color. Uh, even those knobby roots are beautiful. I think just astoundingly be beautiful. Of course, you know, if you've heard of the beach bark disease, very serious. Ultimately, our grandkids will never see an American beach because it's going to wipe it out throughout the eastern. It's a very sad story. Uh, we don't have time to describe that. Nonetheless, they are astoundingly beautiful trees. Uh, just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. In the, the uh, thank you, Wynn. Uh, in, these, uh, in the fall, they tend, the young plants retain their leaves. This is a juvenile characteristic. Uh, the young trees, uh, when they age, they, uh, they, even though this is chronologically the oldest part of the tree, the wood is the first cells laid down, and for the first 10, 15 years or so, this leaf retention aspect, this, and even in oaks, this is the same family as oaks, Fagaceae, and so they have this leaf retention, which is a juvenile characteristic, beautiful in the, in the beech forest. Ah, oh, this is our European, the native, the, the European beech. What, what kind of animal skin does that look like? Elephant skin, yes, yeah, I just love that. Oh, makes me want to eat some haagen right there. Just so beautiful. <laughs> I mean, just gorgeous, gorgeous bark. Very be beautiful, smooth bark. Uh, one of my favorite cultivars of European beaches, tricolor and marginata in the spring, beautiful rose and green and even cream colors, uh, beautiful cultivar. It goes by two different cultivar names. When you pull, get the hook on me when I'm getting yeah, close yeah. to that, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. Break. Okay. <laughs> this is Parodia persica, Persian Parodia. Beautiful, uh, uh, multi trunk, wide growing tree, tough as nails, drought, poor soils, rocky soils, tough. Uh, uh, if you've ever been to the Biltmore, this is an old plant at the Biltmore. Uh, but it does have this very beautiful patchy bark with age, quite handsome. This is in the witch hazel family, interestingly enough. Uh, and this is a fall color. Fall color is spectacular on Persian parodia. Uh, this is one in front of my house right here. And, and no two years is the same. One times it's orange, more yellow, less yellow. Sometimes it's maroon. Just gorgeous. Persian parodia. One of my... Uh, Favorite trees, one of, you, of course, the many. Um, this is Carpinus carolinian, American hornbeam, a small tree, understory tree, and tolerate wet soils. This is it right here. Um, and it, they call it blue beech ironwood, or sometimes called musclewood, musclewood. And that's because the bark is fluted, just like mussels. So beautiful, small tree, tolerates wet soils. You can find this in native haunts where there are wet, where the streams, low areas. Perfect, so you don't, if you have a wet area, don't put in drainage tile, plant American hornbeam. How tall does it get? Uh, it, how tall does it get? There's a question about 
20 feet tall, 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide. And again, it's an understory. It grows fine in the full sun, but it'll grow perfectly fine under the shade of taller trees. And the wood is very hard. This wood is the same weight dry per cubic foot as um, uh, white oak and uh, black locust. Very, very hard wood. And fall color, no two trees are the same, but quite good. Ah, oh, shag bark hickory. Oh, boy. I was, I was hugging on these in Birmingham just two days ago. Beautiful trees with the shaggy bark. Um, and it's also a bat habitat. You usually don't think of bark as a habitat, but um, I'll tell, talk about that in a little bit. But this shaggy bark is just very sensuous. Uh, a roost tree for the uh, bats, for little brown bats. This is the bat here in Indiana bat. So the bats crawl under the bark for uh, protection. And then, of course, is there anything more beautiful than the hickory in the fall? I mean, just astoundingly bright yellow bark, just beautiful. Ooh, prunus cerula, the paper cherry bark. This is a, a, a plant from Asia. Uh, it looks like someone slicked it down with Vaseline. It was just beautiful, shiny, mahogany color, and uh, just wonderful. Now, the flowers aren't worth anything, but who needs flowers when you got this kind of bark? I mean, just, just go, oh. Uh, <laughs> Look at that, just beautiful. Just go. I, I, I heard, I met someone that heard my talk, it must have been 10 years ago, and they met him on the street. And I don't never remember him, but they said, hey, you're the bark guy. I said, yeah, I'm the bark guy. <laughs> so this is a lilac, believe it or not. A lilac with beautiful bark, China snow, Peking lilac, a beautiful exfoliating, shiny bark. So here you have a plant that has beautiful flowers and very shiny bark. Uh, this is it in flower right here. Um, quite handsome. It flowers in late May, early June. Oh, Pinus bungiana. This is one of the aristocrats of the bark world, typically a multi-species. This is from China. Uh, it's typically used in, uh, in China next to temples and very special buildings. Mostly it grows as a multi-trunk tree, but, some, but if you can get it single trunk, that's best. Uh, and because multi-trunks, of course, you know, if you get snow load or ice load, they tend to break apart. So if you can get a single trunk specimen, but the bark is modeled, that camouflage look quite beautiful. Um, here's, if you've been to New York Botanic Garden, here's a single trunk specimen right here. Uh, that's where you really, to be, if, for long-lived specimens, beautiful. There's my wife and this child. Uh, this, this little girl now is about to be 13 years old, hard to believe, but it looks, so, looks like someone took silver paint and put it on the tree. It is absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful tree. This indoctrination, touching the bark? Here. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, she's, she's taking the course. <laughs> Does that tree have to be very old for the bark? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. The, the question is, does the tree have to be old to start... Uh, yeah, to start exposed that colored bark. Yes, I'd say about 15 years. You do have to wait 15 years or so before it starts to become patchy. And no two trees, not all of them, will be silver like this. Um, but they will, uh, but m m many will, but not all. And uh, I'll show you a few different slides. Some have more green, some have a more cream. Some there's browns and oranges. Um, here you see this particular tree, some with greens and, and more mellow colors. Oh, <laughs> look, <laughs> if I had a microscope, I'd go in there. <laughs> oh, the red stem dogwoods. We're talking about these right here. Beautiful. There's two different species, a few different species that have a, this is a relatively new one. This is the win, midwinter fire. It is bicolor, bicolor. Uh, the tips tend to be more orangey red and the inst interior more yellow. But wow, in mass, I'm a big proponent of planting in mass. Uh, if you can imagine, you know, 50 of these, don't plant two, plant 50, quite an effect. I mean, look at that, just gorgeous. For all winter long, you get this, outstanding. Or in a container, well used in a container. Uh, another one, this is cardinal, just all red, but still, again, that effect. There are certain ways to prune these. The older stems, if, you've, if you don't know, the older stems I tend to lose the vibrant color, so there's two ways of pruning. You can go through here and take out the largest, oldest stems, or in about March 
or so, just cut the whole thing down and it'll come up with all these young stems, which will be very vibrant the following uh, fall, winter, and spring. And there are these if yellow ones. I've seen these used in combination, uh, the yellow and the red, quite a nice contrast. The, uh, here's the protuberance group. The, the things that have kind of knobby issues on the plant. Uh, a, a native persimmon, ah, oh, beautiful bark. Uh, I, I like knobby, it's nice. Uh, it's a native tree, beautiful. You know there's male trees, female trees. The fruit is quite good after it at first frost. Uh, these are the flowers, and this looks like a male uh, flower right here. They're relatively, in flowers are inconspicuous, but again, the fruit on the female tree is quite beautiful. American sweet gum, why am I showing you American sweet gum? Uh, but you know these, you ever step on that with bare foot, you get a fond memories, correct? <laughs> But there is one called corky, corky, and it has the species, members of the species will have these large kind of fluted corky stems, uh, but, but the cultivar corky has big corky stems. Uh, very handsome, especially on, <laughs> with snowfall. Oh, ginkgo biloba chichi. Uh, this is on some old, old ginkgos would do this, but uh, this is a young specimen. It's a cultivar with these protuberance. Chichi in Japanese means a certain anatomical feature. I'm not going to mention it right now. <laughs> uh, but I, I kind of, unusual. Again, this is a protuberance group right here. Uh, again, look at those chichis. <laughs> uh, an old, old ginkgo. Look at this here, ancient tree in Japan. Wow, I, I love that, it's just very interesting. Uh, of course, you know ginkgo's a female tree, the fruit. I, I, I got a lot of ginkgo stories, I don't have time for them now. But the fall color is, uh, you know, on the top 10 trees for fall color, ginkgo's gotta be in the top 10. Beautiful, clear, bright yellow. I mean, look at this, just wonderful. The leaves on the ground, don't get your rake out, burn your rake, leave the trees there. Beautiful. Uh, a flat spine prickly ash. This is an Asian tree that has these protuberances right here. Um, kind of interesting. They start out sharp and they get knobby with time. Uh, you would not want to climb this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it even has just, there's, I'll show you a native species in a little bit, even the spines and the leaf right there. Um, and this one, if you, this particular flat spine, Asian form, if you ever see Sichuan pepper, Szechuan pepper is from this species right here. And they use it in Asian cook, very spicy, very hot. Uh, this is our American one, this is a Hercules club. Again, with sharper spines, at first they will turn knobby. Uh, and again, I think very textural in the landscape. I saw it all over Bernheim as a weed, um, but it, kind of interesting. Oh, I was uh, at a botanical garden, and I saw this. It looked like a bird dropping right here. Bird dropping, and that was not a bird dropping right here. This is the larval form. It mimics a bird dropping of a, gi a giant swallowtail butterfly larvae. Just beautiful. So here is, and then this will grow up into the giant swallowtail butterfly. What, a, what mimicry that is to go through the larval stage looking like that. Uh, I am going to go tropical right now. This is the, the silk floss tree or the kapok tree. If, if, if anyone's old enough, you know when you had a hassock or some furniture, they used to stuff it with kapok like a, a cottony material. Uh, but this is um, silk floss tree uh, from South America. Oh, uh, look at these uh, spines right here. This is not hardy. Uh, maybe in de deserts of Arizona. Uh, but look at this swollen butt like that with thorns. The Kardashians have nothing on this tree. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's somewhere in the tropics. Just beautiful. What a self-protection right there. One of the most beautiful flowering of all trees. This is the Kapok tree right here. Gorgeous flower. These are the fruit. And then the fruit contain this cottony material. Again, years ago, before the synthetics, they used to use this stuff in furniture. So we're leaving the protuberance group. Uh, sycamore, these are some sycamores on the Virginia Tech campus. These particular two stay more white. Uh, you can see the seedling variation. That one's the bark has changed. But beautiful white bark, just stunning. Uh, and no two trees are the same. 
Uh, they have all different colors, like camouflage-like effect. Uh, even the, the roots are astoundingly beautiful. Of course, you see these growing along river sides and streams. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, uh, this is at uh, Winter Thur, if you've ever been in Delaware, huge old tree. Uh, and then the Platinus exacerfolia, the London plane tree. Uh, tough tree. Uh, well, the area I grew up in, New Jersey, I, I grew up in New Jersey, uh, in very industrial part where all the oil refineries are, were. And I think that's why I've been driven to nature now. Well, growing up, my idea of wildlife was pigeons. So I think I'm, I'm living in the mountains of Virginia. It is just gorgeous. Uh, so uh, they, the bark is just stunning. There is, and I saw, when, what was the na name of the first place we went to yesterday? It was at Whitehall. Whitehall. We, there was a cultivar of London plane tree called Suttneri, S-U-T-T-N-E-R-Y. It was as wide as this table. The whole trunk was paper white, Suttneri, gorgeous, pure white. Stewardia is oh, one of the top trees for, for bark, Japanese Stewardia. This is in the tea family related to Camellia, T-E-A. Um, it makes a small tree, slow growing. Uh, no two trees are the same for bark. Very handsome in terms of some are, they're all smooth, some are exfoliating, or some are shiny, uh, some diff patchy kind of camouflage like effect. Uh, the flowers are about two to three inches wide. This is in June, stunningly beautiful. Bright red male flowers in the center right here, beautiful. Bright, gold, excuse me. And then good fall color, excellent fall color. Acer griseum, if you know paper bark maple, a small tree from Asia, a beautiful exfoliating bark. Again, no two trees are the same, uh, just gorgeous. Uh, and they even start peeling at a young age. This is one where you can have a young tree and that beautiful exfoliating bark. Uh, this is a somewhat mature tree right here. Again, a smaller tree for smaller areas. Uh, white tigress maple. Uh, this is a beautiful, we have our nadir, native moosewood, Aphyster pensavanicum, at least in the part of the country I go. It's an under tree, tree species, and it, <clears throat> it does have the striped bark, but it loses that striped quality as it ages. This Asian form keeps this striped bark, really, and it is just stunningly beautiful. Again, 12 months a year. Uh, Lagostromia, uh, the crepe myrtles. This is Lagostromia foreii, the Japanese crepe myrtle. Stunning, st absolutely stunning bark. The brown, cinnamon brown, rich, bright colors. No two trees are the same. Uh, if you, uh, this is at NC State Arboretum, uh, one called Fantasy right here. Uh, Fantasy is beautiful. It's been selected for that bark characteristic. Uh, the Foria has white flowers. It doesn't need to have flowers at all. The bark says it all. Another one called Townhouse. Uh, it has this kind of mirrored brown bark finish, very beautiful. Uh, this, the irrigation system went on and it, <laughs> and it slicked up that bark, kind of really neat look to it, just beautiful. Uh, and again, our common crepe myrtles, beautiful for their bark, sinewy characteristic. Uh, and of course, flowers are a bonus. And just, just great form, great bark. Uh, this is one called Natchez. No two, even though it's genetically the same cultivar, no two trees are the same. And Natchez, again, very popular cultivar. This is one of the hardiest ones. In Blacksburg, where I am, it's, uh, it does get quite cold. And most of them, uh, the uh, crepe myrtles get hit during the winter. But Natchez is reliably hardy during the wintertime. Look at this. This is one of those, this, they made a living fence. And this is where two, you know, some trees will naturally graft where they touch. Uh, so here they're growing together and you can see what they did is they tied them up and they fused together so you can make a, a living fence of this. Or if you start next week, you can make one of these. <laughs> <laughs> these are living Lagerstromia. This was taken in China. These plants are growing in the ground and they sculpted them. They, had the, they did not leaf out yet. Um, but here you can see they living, this is all from the ground and they fused these together to make this living vase. Quite beautiful. We're going to end with this one, rainbow eucalyptus. Uh, this, was, uh, this is a tropical plant. Um, I forget where it's native to, nonetheless. Maybe in South Florida you could grow it. I contacted a nursery in Florida, and I said, man, 
how can I get this tree? I want this tree. And they said, where do you live? Then they said, I said, okay, send me five of them. And uh, I said, where do you live? I said, Virginia. And I'm in the mountains of Virginia. They said, no way will this ever grow. So immediately I started thinking, how can I modify my house to grow this plant? <laughs> <laughs> I said, maybe I can make a hole in the room for something. The wife would not have it. So I just have to enjoy the pictures. I mean, the bark is just amazing. How did nature come up with these colors? Just beautiful. Um, rainbow eucalyptus, astoundingly beautiful. Ah, oh, just gorgeous. If you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs>